Good afternoon, and welcome to an AZLA Professional Development Committee webinar. I will be your moderator for today's event. The AZLA Professional Development Committee provides enhanced professional development opportunities for members to increase the knowledge, skills, and abilities of library and information professionals across the state of Arizona. Before we get started, please note a few housekeeping details. Webinar participants are in listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for Q&A, but this time we ask that you put your questions into the chat throughout the presentation. You can find the chat at the bottom of your screen. This session is being recorded and the recording will be made available on the Arizona Library Association YouTube channel. A link will be provided in your follow-up email. Pam Rogers will be your technical director today. If you have any technical issues during the webinar, you can contact her via the chat. If you are unable to hear sound during the webinar, you may dial in using the phone number provided in your registration confirmation email. At the end of the webinar, we ask that you complete a simple four-question evaluation survey. The estimated time to complete the survey is two to three minutes. Please take the time to complete it as we use the data to improve our offerings to you, and your feedback is important to us. Land Statement The Arizona Library Association wishes to acknowledge the Native nations that have inhabited Arizona lands for centuries. We honor the people of these nations on whose ancestral homelands and resources Arizona library members' libraries were built. By offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous sovereignty and will work to hold Arizona Library Association members accountable to the information needs of American Indian and indigenous peoples. Membership. I'd like to encourage library staff of all levels to consider becoming an Arizona Library Association member. Among other things, your membership enables AZLA to provide professional development opportunities to library staff across Arizona. Visit azla.org for more information. And please support AZLA. When you add our organization as your designated charity and purchase through the Arizona Smile portal, Amazon will donate 5% of your eligible purchases made to the Arizona Library Association. Webinar Sponsorship The AZLA Professional Development Webinars reach librarians and library professionals in Arizona and throughout the USA. Do you know a business or organization that would benefit from direct access to library professionals? Well, contact us at development at azla.org for sponsorship levels and rates. I want to invite you to our next program in our monthly webinar series, brought to you by the AZLA Professional Development Committee. On May 12th, join us for Connecting with Community, Lessons from Arizona Genealogy Day with Corey Tuller, Janelle Breedveld, Brittany Stiles, and Linda McCleary. The Arizona State Library, Archives, and Public Records partnered with the Arizona Genealogy Advisory Board to host a free virtual event, Arizona Genealogy Day. They hosted this event over the last two years, and in this presentation, they will provide a detailed case study on their successful event, from planning to presentations to post-event surveys. They will highlight opportunities and resources that will benefit Arizona libraries across Arizona as they pursue their own successful partnerships and programming so they can connect their library resources to those interested in genealogy and local history. They will also share ideas on how libraries can highlight their resources during their annual event. Registration for this webinar is posted to the Arizona State Library's events calendar, the AZLA calendar, advertised in the monthly professional development email blast, and a link will be provided in your webinar follow-up email. And now, I would like to thank you all for attending today. Please welcome Bridget and Chris for their presentation, Don't Be a Chill Host. This meeting won't be terrible, and neither should yours. 
Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Um, so just so you all know, we were hoping to have this as a little bit more of a meeting, but we are limited to the technology of our time. So this will be a bit more of a presentation rather than a meeting. Um, and we'll talk about the difference between those two later on. So we do encourage you to use the chat, participate in any interactive elements. Um, those will be embedded throughout the session. And Chris is also posting some helpful chats in there. Please ask questions throughout. Feel free to answer each other's questions throughout. Um, we want this to be as useful and meeting-like as we can make it. Um, so we'd like to start off with what is hopefully a non-cringy icebreaker. So go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat. What's your name? Where are you at? Um, and what was your favorite song when you were 13? So look back at the most um, embarrassing part of your life and tell us what music you listened to. Um, and I will say that it's okay to do an icebreaker at the beginning of a meeting, especially if it's a large group or people who don't normally work together, but definitely try to make it non-cringy. Um, nothing that requires physical contact if you're in person. Um, in Zoom, you can usually do a quick two minute breakout room, something like that. Um, but please never ever make it something super vague, like tell us a fun fact about yourself because that requires work and it's uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm a very boring person, so I never have a fun fact about myself, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I look, we got a lot of names I know. I feel like I'm just seeing everything that was on the radio. <laughs> and I love it. I love seeing things that I recognize. So while you're putting in your little uh, icebreaker in there, um, the first thing we want to talk about today and sort of introduce you to is the importance of both meeting agendas and meeting minutes. Um, now, because meeting agendas are so important, and Bridget will tell you why in just a minute, we've actually put together one specifically for this little meeting webinar. Um, and you can access that as a Google Doc by either scanning the QR code on your screen with your mobile device or following the link, which I will also post in the chat. There's a little rainbow next to it so it doesn't get lost in all the introductions. Um, but you can follow that link right there. It'll open up our Google Doc. Um, and let me show you what that will look like. So as you can see, um, we've sort of organized this as a open document to everyone attending the meeting. So just to start, we'd love you to enter your name at the beginning of the document here. Uh, we might run out of spaces, so feel free to double up. Uh, we didn't know there'd be that many people here today. Um, and as you scroll down, you can see we've broken the agenda up into topics with an estimated time for each section and plenty of space here for everyone to add notes and meeting minutes. So if you are able to manage multiple screens simultaneously, um, something we recommended at the um, with the post for this meeting. Um, feel free to use your mobile device again, or if you do have multiple screens, please feel free to take notes as we go. At the bottom, we've also added sections for both action items and the next meeting agenda. This is something we recommend you add to all agendas because it's very helpful to help track next steps for your attendees and table topics that might be better for a later discussion. So if you can, please add notes as we go. So let's break down an agenda. The first thing that you want to think about is what's the point? Why are we getting together in this meeting? What needs to be addressed? So are there particular goals? Are there things that you want to accomplish in the meeting? I know we've all been in meetings before where we end up sitting there and thinking, what is even happening right now? And hopefully figuring that out ahead of time will help you avoid that feeling among your attendees. And try to be realistic. Don't try to fit 15, 20 things into your agenda because that's not going to get covered. And if you are, um, you're in a group or something like that where you have long-term goals, you know that they're going to be meeting a bunch, try to figure that out too ahead of time and break it up before all those other meetings. 
Um, and going back to being realistic, also think about if it would make sense for you to have a co-facilitator. Like right now, um, I, I really need Chris to be here. I think he hopefully needs me to be here because we both have different strengths and we're keeping this going together instead of trying to do it all by ourselves. And when you're thinking about time and your agenda, you can even think about how much time should we spend on each item. And that will help to keep things going and not get too stuck on one particular item or let something get ignored entirely. And as you might have noticed, our agenda turned into a meetings document or a minutes document. And that's super easy to do. All you have to do is put it into a different template. Um, it's helpful to assign that task hopefully ahead of time to somebody in particular. Don't start a meeting with who would like to take minutes because then it will be crickets. Um, and again, use that template so that all of your meeting minutes will look similar and people will have an easier time skimming them. Um, use a timer, like I said, have that in the agenda. And Chris showed at the end um, how to keep track of ideas for the next meeting, other communications, and those action items too. I do think that meeting minutes are a lot more important than some people give them credit for um, because people miss meetings, Zoom connections cut in and out, and we are human people and we have poor memories. And so you don't wanna end up having the same conversation over and over again in different meetings. Have that written down so that you can actually move forward. One thing I will add is that when I am writing out a minutes document, I really like summarizing everything at the very top so if someone is skimming it to you know, catch up for a next meeting, it's a great way to do that, or to highlight things in different colors or with red text, just to make it really visible, the, the key um, components of that meeting. So let's talk about what else is good to do before a meeting. So uh, one thing that we're going to be sort of playing around with in this little session is Mentimeter. Um, this is a great online system that allows us to get participation from you guys and actually answer some questions from you guys as well. So we'd like to start off with a Mentimeter question here. And you can access Mentimeter by either going to the website, the menti.com at the top of the screen and entering that uh, code, the 8038530 code, that will take you to our questions. Um, but I'm also going to post it here in the chat for you if you'd like to click that instead. So the first question here is, how many hours per week do you spend in meetings? Looking at your 40-hour work week, Monday through Friday, hopefully, how many hours a week do you spend in meetings? Hey, averaging at 8.5, but that's 25% of your week. 9.8, we're increasing there. Uh, someone has crazy amount of hours, 20 a week in a meeting. That's that's a bit much, 25, oh geez. Oh uh, no, Karen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully you can start to talk some people into not having meetings after this. <laughs> So I want to give everyone one more minute to hopefully um, follow that Menti link. If you're having trouble, just let us know in the chat. I see nine people in, in Menti right now. So it looks like we have an average of about 9.2 hours with everyone that's answered so far. The next question, I think more importantly, is what percentage of those hours do you think are well spent from 0% to 100%? How much of that time is actually worth it? Okay, so at least one of us, a few of us think it's pretty important. One of us thinks it's not important at all. That's uh, telling, I think. Averaging around 55 or so. Wow, I'm impressed at the value of y'all's meetings. <laughs> so obviously not all the hours we spend in meetings are worthwhile on average, um, but more than I thought would be. I would say probably 20% of the hours I spend in meetings, which is probably about 12 to 15 a week, is, is worth it. If it's not letting you vote, Pamela, you might need to refresh. I did have to refresh on mine too. Um, so when you, as the meeting facilitator, are planning a meeting, 
Um, going back to your agenda, think about why are you meeting? What's the purpose? What's the goal? What do you want to accomplish? If you can't articulate that, maybe it shouldn't be a meeting because you really need to start there and be clear. Um, and think about, is it worth it? What's the point again, but also what could people be working on if they weren't in the meeting? Could they actually be working towards the goals that this meeting is supposed to achieve? Does it have to be a get together? If you had to pay people specifically to be in that room together, um, is it worth it? You can do it by $100 per person or take the extra time to figure it out by salary. It might not be worth the cost. And try to decide how long should your meeting be? Does it really have to be an hour? If you've been reasonable with your agenda, there's a good chance that you can cover everything in 45 minutes. And so you can always schedule it for 45 minutes, which is super helpful in my opinion, because I think we've all had days where you end up with six Zoom meetings back to back, all of them scheduled for an hour. And at one point you're having to send a message saying, I need to take a bio break. Don't force people to do that. Give people a break. Um, if you do want to schedule it for an hour, it is a good idea to intend to end at 45 minutes because who hates having a meeting end early? And my favorite thing to think about when scheduling a meeting is how could you possibly avoid a meeting? You might even want to start there. What about an email? What about a document that can be collaborative? Is there another way that we can accomplish these goals without spending an hour or 45 minutes together? So thinking about what Bridget just said on um, other ways we might want to share information, we actually have an interactive activity here that's going to use an online system called Padlet um, that's going to help us think a little bit more about if something should be a meeting or if it should be some other method of sharing information. So um, if you would use your mobile device to either scan the QR code on the screen or follow that Padlet link, uh, I will put, post this in the chat as well. This will be our first little interactive activity. So here in this little um, Padlet, uh, the objective here is to, um, we have a, a series of given topics in the first column uh, about ways you might, or things you might need to share in some, some type of format. Uh, like there's a new staff member in the department, staff has, have expressed concern about a new policy. So the idea here is for you to slide the topics into the category of communication you think they best are suited for. So we have information sharing, which is pretty much anything other than a meeting, emails, team posts, et cetera. We have a meeting segment or a portion of a meeting, a full meeting, a presentation, which is a little bit more in, um, formal, telling people information, less discussion-based. And then of course we have social gatherings. We actually just had a pizza party yesterday at NAU. So that's an example of a social gathering. Um, so please feel free to interact with this uh, by sliding the little comments here in the category you think they're best suited for. You can also upvote or downvote if you agree with the placement, or you can add a comment if you'd like to comment on it. I see a lot of upvotes, but not a lot of moving. Are we having issues at all? Not working. So you should be able to just um, click. If it won't move, um, sometimes if you hold it down and click, it might say pick a section to post to, and then you can click on that. So I know if I hold down um, and click, there's a new staff member in the department. I do have a list here of sections to post to. Oh no, we practiced uh, this yesterday and it worked. So another option if you can't seem to move it is if you can click the little plus symbols um, and retype one of these topics in the category you think it's best suited for. See if that works for you. 
And I see um, some people are commenting directly on the topics too. That's another option for sure. There we oh, go. Love it. Okay. <laughs> We, we tried testing it out ourselves and it worked when we did it, but maybe there's two yeah. people at once. <laughs> That's another hot meeting tip <laughs> when you're using technologies, give it a run through and then hope that it sticks. <laughs> Looks like the new staff member is really suited for social gatherings. I would agree with that. Uh, you don't necessarily want to introduce someone in a meeting, especially if it's a Zoom meeting, pretty impersonal there. It's hard to get to know people through Zoom. Um, and I have really bad memory with names. So Zoom is really bad for me when meeting new people. Looks like there's some disagreement over concerns about a new work policy should be a full meeting or a meeting segment. I think those are pretty similar. Um, obviously, if it's a larger concern, that might be called for a much larger meeting. I do like that staff training on circulation systems has been put into presentation. Not a whole lot you need to discuss there, so does it really need to be a meeting? Oh, and I like seeing notes about in case there are questions and issues, or this might be an email. Yeah, something as simple as library hours are changing, I think definitely deserves information sharing for, for two main reasons. First of all, people can look back in their emails or on Teams and, and see what the hours were. It's hard to remember back to a meeting necessarily. Um, and also, do you really need to discuss it all that much? Does it really need to be in a meeting? So I think it's a great place for that. So I'll give you just one more moment to add whatever you'd like. So Pamela has a question here, Chris, that you might be able to answer. Um, how do slash would you use Padlet for communication in the context of this training? Okay, you might need to clarify that, Pamela. Um, so I, I think Padlet is really great for getting ideas. Um, and I will actually see that in the next Padlet activity in a few minutes. Um, how to make your meeting less boring and or yeah so one thing that's padlet is great with and i'll mention this later as well is that a lot of people in zoom meetings especially if they have their cameras off aren't really engaged and don't really like to interact with the meeting but doing so in in this format that's more text-based and less speaking based um, tends to get more engagement more participation um, and it also can really you be used as sort of an idea generation tool, which we'll see in the next example. All right, thank you all for your participation. And I do apologize for the technical issues. So I really like to talk about what are not meetings. <laughs> I think a lot of us have been in the situation of thinking this could have been an email and that's where information sharing comes in. In my opinion, um, nobody likes secrets, and it could have been an email. In coming into a meeting and creating one saying, I'm going to bestow this information upon you, can actually come across as a power play. Um, if that information is so secret, why can't it be an email? It's, it's an awkward thing to do. And it's also hard to have a meaningful discussion in a meeting when you're sharing information with people on the spot. They need time to process and to digest. Um, of course, one-on-ones, that type of thing might be different. Um, another thing to think about with information sharing in terms of sharing things in advance and then discussing is you might even wanna talk with participants one-on-one -on -one in some situations to talk about their, um, their role in the meeting, their role in the group. That way you can integrate their feedback. You know, if you shared something out and said, hey, you specifically, what do you think about this? You can integrate that before the meeting and that can encourage members 
to be a little bit more invested during the meeting itself. One fun little psych fact that I learned is that not only do people nod in agreement, but they also nod in recognition. So if they've seen that information ahead of time and they've participated in it already, you're more likely to get that sort of positive feedback from them. And then maybe it can also spread to the other people in the group who might be a little bit more on the fence. Um, presentations, like what we're doing, it's fine. Get together with a presentation, but be clear about it up front. Don't call it a meeting. And I know that might sound a little bit pedantic, but it does change the mindset of people going into it, and it changes the amount of prep that they have to do. Is it something that they need to be ready to talk about, or is that something where they'll need to be um, more relaxed and not necessarily need to engage as much? I know Chris talked about how to make presentations engaging, so that is an option, but it's also not the same thing as a meeting. And social gatherings too. Please have social gatherings. They're fine. Just let attendees know. And don't be upset if people don't come. Not all workers um, come to work to socialize. And that's okay. It's totally fine to do. And a pet peeve of mine is sort of on the flip side, which is a Zoom happy hour that ends up becoming a working meeting. Please don't tell me this is a social event and then tell me to work on something. That's not why I'm there. <laughs> but we don't wanna to be totally negative this whole, th whole time. Um, meetings do exist for a reason. They are on purpose. There are reasons to meet. And a lot of it has to do with back and forth conversations. So do we need to get together to make plans and set some goals? Do we need to follow up on anything that was missed in Teams or emails? And going back to those social gatherings, you can kind of treat some meetings that way, especially if you've only seen them on Zoom and everybody has their cameras off. You might just want to put a base to a name because you don't want to run into somebody in the hallway and then start talking to you because they recognize you, but you don't recognize them. It's a mess. So do meetings for that reason. And it can be a way to hash out a series of questions or issues that you can't really do as easily in writing. Um, oh, I see meetings are about managing, addressing, and recognizing people's emotions. They can be. Yeah, it really depends on the topic and just what's appropriate. So let's talk about during the meeting. Not everybody read your document. Not everybody read your document. Not all of you read the agenda. Not all of you opened the minutes. Not all of you even finished reading our program description. That's totally okay. We're fine with that. So we tried to review that very, very quickly. And we made sure that you had access to it and that you can look at it later. That's the big thing if you send out a document and not everybody reads it. Please do not read paragraphs to a room of grown adults. It's just a waste of time. If everybody has access and you've given them the gist of the idea, that's good enough. So uh, here's a way to be a little bit more interactive with this particular topic, and that is, uh, what are some ways that you have seen meeting hosts in the past try to engage the audience? Um, this is, again is another mentee, so you can use the link at the top to connect, or I will post that link in the chat. Uh, if it doesn't work for you for some reason, feel free to put your ideas in the chat as well. Are there any tools someone has used to create some breakout rooms? Yep, that's a pretty common standard one. A mural board. Ooh, I'd like to hear more about that in the chat. What's a mural board? Is that like when somebody draws what's happening in the meeting? I've seen that once. Word clouds are great. I always, I always like diagrams. Um, I think, yeah, whiteboards, interactive boards. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's one great thing that Menti does as well, just to put that out there. Um, but I, I tend to like to facilitate meetings, especially in-person meetings, with something on a board. Um, note cards is a great way to get people to jot down ideas, post them up on the board. I've seen that done a lot in person. Um, Calling on people. 
We have opinions. We have opinions. <laughs> <laughs> that is a way that hosts have definitely tried to engage people. So great response. Um, I don't know if that's my preferred way. I'm more of an introvert in, in those types of situations. Ooh, I'm calling on people. Yeah, thanks, Anna. <laughs> Shared Google Doc, yeah. Awesome. Oh, blank Feel spaces in the agenda. That seems kind of like our minutes document where there's spots where people can fill in the blanks. I dig it, y'all are already on our page. This seems a little bit more uh, specific, specific words, like single words cut out. Yeah. It's almost like a quiz, like an in-meeting quiz. Now that just sounds dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Stress people out. And I do want to remind everybody that you can please take notes in our meeting minutes document if you're not already. And Miro.com is a new one for me. Someone want to explain what that is in the chat? Or I can look it up. I have a screen. Virtual whiteboard, great. Feel free to keep adding suggestions to that list or put them in chat if you would like. Let's talk about generous authority. Um, we have tried to protect, equalize, and connect you all. So we've asked you to be present turn off notifications, move your phone out of the way. We want to protect you from boredom, from technology, and in a way from each other. We are also hoping to equalize you all. We talked about um, the ability to put on subtitles. I hope that function is working for you all. So we're all on an equal playing ground there. And we're also, we have a pretty flat hierarchy here. We've got our attendees and our panelists, but everybody's here together interacting together in the chat. You're not just sending us messages, you're sharing with each other. Um, and we've also, we're hoping to genuinely listen to you all. That's what we're trying to do here. We're watching the chat, we're talking with you. Um, we're trying to understand where you're coming from, asking you questions. And that's also a best practice um, with connecting and equalizing. Because when you are listening to others and you're showing it, they're hopefully more likely to listen to you and you keep that back and forth going. Um, so that's what I think about when it comes to generous authority, especially connecting, because everybody's there for a reason. And this is something that's important to practice in all meetings, but especially if you're the one hosting the meeting or facilitating the meeting. You really want to be the person who's there to not just speak to people, that'd be more of a presentation, but to get people involved, to create discussion, create that equal playing field. And I think that's really important to take away from this. Um, so we do have a question from Amy Morris, tips for helping slash managing people who miss meetings and don't read minutes for very information heavy meetings. Um, I would kind of say that has a lot to do with recordings and action items. So if there are things that are applicable to them directly, maybe they don't need all the information in the minutes um, or just all the information in general, they might just need what's applicable to them. And you can follow up with them to say, hey, have you done your part? You're in this meeting, you're in this group because you have something to bring to the table. So are you filling in that role? Um, that's my opinion. I don't know if anybody else, if anybody else has tips for that, please do share in the chat because that's a really good question. Uh, um, and I will, I'll ahead. just really quickly reiterate what I think I said earlier. Um, meeting minutes can be very, very extensive depending on the content of the meeting. But if you use things like agenda items or um, that word you just said that I forgot. Uh, but you can highlight things, you can create a summary at the very beginning, so they can read something really quickly. You don't have to include every single sentence said by every single person in the meeting, um, but summarizing it, I think, is really useful. Action items. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> so our title of our presentation was Don't Be a Chill Host. That's because we want you to be courageous and firm as the meeting facilitator. This session is for meeting facilitators and hosts. Um, so being chill 
means taking a step back, being too laid back. But the fact of the matter is that you're not an attendee, so don't act like it. You're a host, you're the facilitator. Don't create that vacuum that other people then feel like they can fill. So it's your job as the facilitator to set the ground rules and expectations and to enforce them. You don't want to let one person eat up too much airtime, that's for sure. Um, everybody hates those meetings. Um, because it's not about that one person and their personality. You're not at a presentation, you're at a meeting. It's about everybody in the room. Because I keep coming back to the sentence that everybody should be there for a reason. Think about who's there, why are they there, and make sure that you're able to protect, equalize, and connect them all. At the same time, don't be rigid. That's not generous either. You may be the boss of the meeting, but you're there because of everybody else. You're not the star of the show because again, this is not a presentation, it's a meeting. So while you're there to create boundaries in which attendees have to work, you're also making those boundaries wide enough to where they can exercise some freedom and some creativity and be able to participate. As the facilitator, it's your goal to move towards progress, to meet the goals of your meeting. So don't be a controlling curmudgeon. Curmudgeon, love that word. Curmudgeon? Yeah. <laughs> So for our second Padlet here, we'd like to get you all thinking about uh, what generous authority is and how you might use generous authority to reframe some of the ways we often see people um, approach meetings and approach the attendees in the meeting. So again, please follow the link in the chat or on the screen to open up this Padlet. So what we have here is a list of seven common phrases that are often heard in meetings that I've been in at least, but that are fairly aggressive, maybe even inappropriate at times. So I'd like you to pick a few that really, um, yeah, someone's doing it already, I love it. Uh, pick a few that really speak to you, click the plus symbol below them to rewrite them in a way that expresses more generous authority. Um, is still authoritative, but is also chill and not aggressive. Um, feel free to write as many as you'd like. And again, you can also upvote and downvote the ones you agree with or add comments as well. Fun fact about the word aggressive, I was a cheerleader in third grade and third grade only. And that's where I learned to spell the word aggressive. B-E aggressive, H, <laughs> and then you spell the whole thing. Otherwise, I would never spell it right, I'm pretty sure. So I love whoever put for the first one, let's chat about that in a separate meeting. That's a great thing to put in the bottom of your meeting agenda, meeting minutes. Um, this is a topic for next time. We might not have time for it today. Uh, it's still valuable, it's still important. Someone brought it up, so maybe we should save it for next time. So the, the one I threw in there to kind of throw a curveball was the last one. Sarah, you've been very quiet today. Anything to add? Uh, that's one that I personally cannot stand because I'm the type of person that really likes to, to sit there in a meeting and absorb what is being said. I need additional time to think about it before I can then speak my thoughts about it openly. Um, so I do like you know, the example here, the floor is open for discussion for anyone who wishes to speak. Um, I think calling on individuals is a bit aggressive and throws me off balance and I have to just ramble when I'm called on. So I appreciate this, uh, this response here. Yeah, Chris and I were talking about being excited to learn um, what to say in those situations because I, I'm extremely guilty of that because I'm kind of hyper aware of the fact that I want everybody who's here to be here and be engaged. And so I've personally said to Chris, do you have anything to add? Um, so teach me how to not put him on the spot, please. Oh, I also like that you can always send me an email, the, the most recent one. Um, yeah, some people yes. aren't necessarily comfortable speaking their mind in a group of, uh, in front of a group of people. So having that option to still tell you what they're thinking, but not in front of everybody. I know we do have a lot of other um, topics to talk about in there, but I do want to add to the 
you've been very quiet today. It is important, right, to encourage those quieter voices. So one thing I learned about just this morning was the idea of inviting a pause. So you can ask a question and basically say, so take a minute to think about that, and then let's all talk about it together. Um, I also heard a while ago the idea of wait. Why am I talking? <laughs> so as your generous authority, feel free to say that at the top of your meetings. <laughs> I'm not against it. And again, don't call in anybody specific. People need time to process. And there's no real correlation between the speed of somebody talking and the value of what they're saying. We all really ought to be taking time to think about what we're going to say before we do and give everybody the opportunity to do that. What I really love seeing in a lot of these different rewrites is the word we, the word us. Um, you are bringing in that that group mentality, showing people that they are important members of the group, their thoughts are important, um, enthusiasm is important in this example. Um, and yeah, that's I think a great way to exert that authority, but in a way that is chill and is generous to everyone attending your meeting. I'm looking at the, we're out of time to talk about this section. I love the phrasing that y'all are putting in there, like. Let's schedule a time to give it its full attention, you know, really showing why it's worth it for other people to talk about this and understanding that they find it valuable and that you're understanding how they find it valuable. Same with taking that suggestion into consideration. I'm hearing this, let's get back to you. Yeah, a lot of getting back to you. I also like the uh, let's try to find a positive in this, not dwell on the negative. Because, uh, you know, change is important. Change happens. Not everyone is okay with that change. Um, and it, it makes it harder when the negative is continually brought into that conversation. So I like that answer as well. Um, now, these will be available for as long as you'd like them, so uh, feel free to, to connect to this link later on and see some of these responses and see if you can learn from some other people's rephrasing. So you've hosted your fabulous meeting, um, and now it's over, except this one isn't. I'm sorry. Um, hopefully you've done all of your goals and your agenda items, and then you can end it. Just because you scheduled an hour does not mean that you need to fill that hour. If you didn't do all of those things, put it off for next time. It's okay to not have gotten everything done. Maybe there's another way to get those things done. A lot of meetings end with a social chat, which is also totally okay, but you as the generous authority and the host ought to give everybody else an out and say, I understand that we've done everything. So some people wanna stick around and chat, cool. If you don't, if you have a hard stop and you need to go do something else, please do, that's okay too. It's your job to do that and don't make people have to ask to leave. So now that we've talked a little bit about what makes a good meeting, I also want to highlight some meeting tools that we have used in this webinar to make your meetings more engaging, maybe more interactive, and just overall more enjoyable, less talking. So the first one, which we had, yep, some trouble with, uh, was Mentimeter. It's a really great online system, typically. Uh, for integrating questions, quizzes, audience participation into your meetings. Um, this is a really great system to get people engaged with the content, to ask questions during your meeting without having everyone talk over each other. Um, you can also embed questions into presentations like we've done in this example and share those presentations online. You can collect responses in real time. Very, very interesting way to, to get people thinking and get people talking without taking too much time. Um, now with the free version of Mentimeter, you can create unlimited presentations with unlimited audience reach, um, but these only have two free questions or five quiz slides per presentation. There's also some upgradable versions starting at $12 a month that can go to unlimited questions, 
Um, and you can also import things like PowerPoint slides. You can export your results to Excel if you need more data-driven analysis of those. But for what it's worth, I found that the free version is really effective, great, simple way to introduce things to your meetings. Now, the other one we've seen today is Padlet, which creates more interactive activities. I think the last one was pretty successful. The first one, the dragging, maybe not so much. Um, but with Padlet, you basically create digital boards with different types of content. You can have text like we did, documents, images, videos, even illustrations. And then the attendees to your meeting can add their own content, they can comment on things, and they can interact with it in different ways. It's a great tool for adding engagement, uh, adding visualizations, and participation to your meetings, but also collecting ideas from maybe the, the quieter folks in your meeting. The free version of Padlet allows you to create three Padlets at once, um, but you can also pay to increase that number. Now, the last thing I want to talk about with the tool section here is some tips and tricks for managing Zoom meetings. Since Zoom is by far the most important tool we need to use in today's day and age. So this little video, I'm going to try to interact with as best as possible. This is me welcoming you to Zoom land. So first and foremost in Zoom, I recommend you taking a look at the audio and video settings in the bottom corner of your screen. Video settings in particular has a lot of really great options to help you with Zoom. Uh, this includes switching to HD mode so your audience gets a clearer view of you. Uh, now, one of my favorites is the little slider a little bit below that touch up my appearance. I was looking a little rough the day I recorded this. So it's basically a filter that will smooth out your skin a little bit. But probably most importantly is adjust for low light. So if you are giving a presentation in a dark environment, this will brighten you up a little bit for your audience. Audio settings, one really important one is the suppress background noises in the center there. Typically this is set to auto, but if you are someone who has a really loud keyboard or if you have a dog barking in the background, street noise, AC noise from your ceiling like I do, um, clicking, changing this to high will help even out the background noise and get rid of those distractions. Um, especially if you're doing something professional like an interview via Zoom, definitely want to click that on. Now, back in the regular Zoom screen, um, of course, we all know that a lot of the settings are down at the bottom, but there are some important ones here you might not know about. Um, so the live transcript setting, very important. You want to turn that on so your audience can see captions as you speak in the Zoom meeting. But also important is the participants panel. Um, this will allow you to control all the participants and see who is in the meeting, which hopefully you're familiar with. Now, down at the bottom, there is the mute all button. So if someone is speaking and uh, you want to mute them, you can do it for everyone down here. There's also an additional menu that will let you do some other things like uh, turn off that annoying sound when someone joins or leaves the meeting or mute participants upon entry so their mics aren't turned on accidentally. Now, if you have a particular attendee that's causing issues, the list at the top will let you control everybody individually. So you can mute someone manually up here. You can also ask someone to unmute if they are trying to speak and they're just speaking into the void because their mic isn't on. Additional options up here, if you click on a specific person's name and click more, you can make them a co-host if they need additional settings. Uh, or you can make them a full host if you plan on leaving the meeting a little early. Now you can always click on yourself and reclaim your host status if you're not leaving. Um, so just know that that's up there and available to you. Now the final settings I want to mention are the share screen settings, which is down in the bottom again. A lot of people look over some of this. So if you are the host, you want to make sure that advanced sharing options and you have all participants turned on. This way everyone can share their screen, especially if they need to for some reason. Um, but also when you're sharing your own screen, there's a little button in the bottom corner that says share sound. Now that's very important if you plan to share music or videos with sound playing, 
that will basically share the sound on that screen so your audience can actually hear the video you're trying to play. Right next door is Optimize for Video Clip. You can turn that on if your video clips are skipping for your audience, kind of reduces lag and helps the video play a little bit more cleanly. And if you are sharing your own screen, at the very top, there's a few really important options. Uh, one of those is Annotate, uh, which will let you basically write on your screen. You can add text, drawings, illustrations, so you can highlight specific areas. You can circle something important so your audience can see it, like the quick search here on the library's webpage. There's also a Spotlight tool, which will add a little red dot next to your mouse cursor, so as you move your mouse around the screen, your audience can view it a little better. So lots of really great Zoom settings. I definitely recommend, oop, that is the wrong thing to click. I definitely recommend you take a look at some of those um, because there are a lot of great settings in there. The only thing I would add to Chris's amazing tools run through is that the content of your meeting needs to come before the tech. So don't use a Padlet, don't use a Menti if it doesn't make sense for your meeting. Um, we're using all these tools because we are a little bit limited. We're in a time crunch and we are using Zoom webinars. So we can't do like breakout rooms and that type of thing. So really think about the purpose. Again, going back to the basics before you start to add in these super cool things that can be helpful. After your meeting, you're not finished. You still have things to think about, and this is what you get for scheduling a meeting. <laughs> you have to think about, are there more meetings after this? Do there need to be? If there are, then do those first steps that we talked about. Really decide if you do need to meet. Are there ways to avoid a meeting? Put together your agenda. Focus on that purpose. Follow up on your action items. Who was assigned what? What is supposed to be accomplished by when? Um, and try to keep things moving along. Make sure that the next one will be productive. Otherwise, you could end up in a situation where you're rehashing things or having to call people out and say, why didn't you do this thing? Meeting is not the time for that. Do that when you're planning. And either way, if you've decided to have another meeting or not, send out those minutes. Maybe you did a Zoom recording because a lot of people were missing. That's a good idea to do. Send that out, any other relevant information, documents. If you're not sure if you should have another meeting, just ask your people. Send that out as a question when you're sending out your minutes and recording and other relevant things. And then you have to reflect. None of us are vampires. We all have the ability to reflect. So think about things in terms of assessment because we're all librarians and we love assessment. Figure out was the meeting productive and was it really, how do you know what worked, what didn't? Um, you can follow up with your participants, find out their input. Like was said at the beginning, um, there's gonna be a survey after this session. So please be honest and frank with us so we can actually use your feedback. We want that. If this is the worst hour of your entire life and you say that we should never present anything ever again, tell us, that would be super helpful to know. Um, and you as the facilitator, Think about what did you learn? What did you learn from everybody else who was in the meeting? What did you learn about yourself as a facilitator? Um, is there anything else that you have to take away from your meeting um, that was beneficial for you? So thinking about that assessment and what works for you in a meeting, we'd like you to respond to this last mentee question, which again, I'll post in the chat for you. Um, so what things have you learned today that you might use in the future? Really curious to see what you all have to say about this. Uh, if it's nothing, that would hurt us, but we would also understand. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah, generous authority is a really great one. I think it's a lot of things, a lot of, you know, you don't get learn, you can't speak right now. <laughs> you don't get taught generous authority, uh, especially if you start to have a, uh, a position of authority in your organization. It's not something you, you learn. So I think that's something that's really great to think about when you are hosting a meeting. Yeah, and it's, it's okay to be in charge. The other people coming to your meeting, they expect you to be in charge. They are not there to be in charge. That's your role. So it's okay to really hold on to that. Um, if, you ref if you refresh, that's what I was able to do. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
but feel free to put it in the chat. I do believe that the chat will be saved. Nobody, one person is gonna use setting an agenda. <laughs> I'm hurt. <laughs> well, at least I got to you, one person. <laughs> Hopefully, Anna, hopefully. <laughs> oh, somebody like, heard my plea. <laughs> generous authority is a hit, I like that. Me too. Um, it comes from Priya Parker's book, The Art of Gathering. If you did see our agenda, um, it's, it's included at the resources at the bottom. Yay, we have somebody who read it. So uh, the last few minutes here, we just want to gather some questions if there are any remaining, but thank you all for participating and for joining us today. Um, apologize if you weren't able to use Menti and Padlet correctly, but at least we got some engagement, that, that's important. Um, and they are great tools, so I highly recommend you take a look at, at both of them. Um, but. If you can use Menti, feel free to ask questions through Menti or through the chat, and we would both be happy to answer anything outstanding that you'd like to know about. And having run events in Flagstaff, I've learned that it's okay to not start on time, but it's very important to end on time. So if anybody does have to leave, feel free. We will stick around here for the next three minutes. So thank you all for coming. You can ask questions in the chat. Um, email us, we put our emails in there. Keep all of the documents and things that we shared. I think they'll be shared out again. Expert advice, Sam, thanks. <laughs> We try our best. Sure do. Thanks everybody for coming. Well, I'm glad we allowed questions throughout because it seems like we don't have a lot coming in. Oh, great question. Do you have any tips for when you're attending but not hosting a meeting that's not going so well or not run well? So I would say that depends on the person who is hosting the meeting. Um, there are certain individuals that, based on their personality, are not going to respond well if you try to, to move the meeting in a direction that's a little bit more engaging or, or that's going well. Um, I, I still think there are things you can say to take over some authority without stepping on the toes of that person. Um, any tips, Bridget? Um, I, yeah, you don't want to come across like you're trying to usurp their authority, um, but you can, I think, still be a little bit diplomatic in that way. So going back to the Padlet with the aggressive phrases, I think that you can probably use some of those to keep things moving, especially if it's a situation where, you know, one person is just talking, talking, talking. I know I've been in one meeting where it's like, hey, don't we have another agenda item? I'm really interested in finding out more about this other thing. Um, or do we have another meet? Like um, I mentioned before this meet, before this presentation to Chris and some of the organizers that today I heard the phrase, um, Understanding conflict requires curiosity. So I'm a big thing uh, of a big fan of phrasing things as questions, as genuine questions, um, in order to sort of get a point across. Because you are wondering why are we stuck here, and I'm kind of rambling at this point. But I hope a little bit of that babbling came across clearly and was helpful. <laughs> That's how I tend to be in, in class instruction sessions. I just babble and hope I answer the question. <laughs> And then you kind of trail off. You're like, uh -huh. anyway. <laughs> so we're at two, but I do want to bring up this last question here. Where is the line between engaging and being silent? Uh, any ideas, Bridget? Um, I, I'm not 100% sure if I understand this question, to be honest. Is it between um, like waiting for people to engage? Is that the silence that you're trying to avoid? If you're the person who asked, you can post in the chat, or if you don't want to share it with everyone, you can direct message. Um, but I think that that, if you are in a situation where you're like, 
hey, everybody do this thing and nobody's participating in it, nobody's answering your question, that might be a good time to say, well, email me, take time to think about this and then email me later on. That's all I can think about. Well, for anyone who's left, thank you again for joining us. Virgin and I had fun putting, to this, get, putting this together and we appreciate you taking the time to, to learn from us, hopefully. Yeah. Best of luck with your meetings. Thank you both so much for being here with us today. Um, and we will send out the, uh, an email with a link to the recording of the webinar. So everyone have a wonderful day. Thanks, you too. Thanks for having us.